this echinacea plant as a perennial is also a great one to just talk about when to know the best time to harvest a plant. Um, first of all, you'll notice in a lot of herbals or when I talk about a plant, I'll talk about which part of the plant is used. So there are certain parts of the plant that are more medicinally active than others, or the parts of the plant may have different uses. Um, in echinacea, the whole plant is used similarly. Um, so we can use what's called the flowering aerial parts or the root for medicine. Um, and one of my favorite quotes about um, plant medicine says that the best time to harvest a plant is when you're standing right in front of it, um, which I think just speaks to how we can get overly um, hung up on waiting for the optimum harvest time and we might actually miss that. So I just want to tell you about optimum harvest times but also invite you to relax that a little bit. Um, and certainly when you're learning as a student, getting to know the plants in all phases and how they taste and how they work in all phases um, is really valuable. Um, but generally speaking, once you know which part of the plant is medicinally active, you want to wait for the time in the season where that part of the plant will have the most vitality. Um, so here in the Northeast, we're in a temperate climate, um, so the plant is really storing a lot of the vitality in its roots in the fall, winter, and spring. Um, and of course, you can't really harvest roots in the frozen ground in the winter, so we're harvesting root medicine in the fall or in the spring. And in fact, for a perennial plant, the greatest vitality is in the root in the fall because they've just spent the summer months pulling in all of the energy and storing it in the roots for winter. Um, and when we're thinking about harvesting roots such as dandelion or yellow dock and burdock, the roots are going to be more bitter in the spring because they'll have used up all the sugars through the winter and they'll be a little bit sweeter and more nourishing in the fall when they have more of those starchy sugars such as inulin. For harvesting the aerial parts of the plant, um, this is a great time for harvesting leaf medicine. Um, so those are things like plantain or violets. Um, but if we want to harvest the flowering aerial parts, which are the above ground parts of the plant, for echinacea we want to wait until midsummer. Um, so that's when we're waiting for the plant to be in full flower and we're harvesting um, often the top um, 6 to 12 inches with the flowers intact. Um, and then we would dry those and process those um, as tea or perhaps um, make a tincture. And echinacea makes a, a really good fresh plant tincture. Um, for flower medicine, you want to wait for when the plant is in full flower, which in Vermont is primarily around the solstice. Um, again, when the plant has the most vitality in the part that you're targeting. So I want to demonstrate harvesting root medicine. Um, and again, considering the vitality of the plant, you want to be harvesting in the spring and the fall. And part of that is about the potency of the medicine, but it's also about respecting the body of the plant. And that if you're harvesting roots when it's still in leaf and flower, as this one is just starting to, it can be more stressful for the plant. So we're not going to harvest all of this root. We're just going to harvest part of it. The other thing to keep in mind is that you don't want to just pull the plant up um, from the stem, but you want to dig around the plant and loosen the soil, and then you, with your hands, find where the root is and gently pull it up. And this one is connected to some trailing other plants, and if we follow it along, we can find a section of the root that isn't attached to a plant um, and just pull off a thumb-sized amount and then bury the plant again afterwards so that it can continue growing. And of course, whenever we're harvesting, consider putting some gratitude in your fingertips as you're doing this. And um, this plant, Solomon Seal, um, has a really mild, delicious flavor. It reminds me of a carrot with um, peanut butter on it. Um, and this is a really good medicine for joints and connective tissue. You can see that the shape of it is almost like swollen joints. And it's another rich source of a land twin, um, which can be healing to not just skin tissue, but also ligaments and other connective tissue um, and cartilage. So this is a great remedy for um, athletes, as well as folks who might be healing from athletic injuries. And it can be eaten fresh like this, or it can be tinctured. I recommend a fresh tincture. It can also be dried um, and powdered and added to smoothies or other foods. It can be a really convenient way to take this plant. 
Solomon seal as a root medicine, I would never harvest it in the wild from a forested patch. I would look for cultivated Solomon seal in um, perennial gardens just to protect the natural population in the wild. So raspberry is a great example of um, an approach to harvesting leaf medicine um, because this plant is um, not quite flowering yet and the leaves are young and tender um, and so this would be a great time to harvest it for tea or infused oil or other remedies that you might make. Um, so when you're harvesting leaf medicine you want to try and do as minimal damage to the plant as possible. So with something that you can harvest with your fingernail or In this case a leaflet um, and you want to make sure that you're only harvesting about a third life cycle which is not the point we want to sort of support um, the plant to go through its life cycle while also helping to free up some of its medicine um, and in fact raspberries tend to grow a lot of dense um, and it actually helps to improve airflow through the plant to remove some of the excess green material um, whenever I harvest from a plant um, I think about putting in the as I'm pinching them off um, and if you don't have a thumbnail or it's a plant that's a little bit tougher, it might be a good idea to use scissors or even a pair of garden snips to, to harvest in a way that is um, minimizing the damage to the plant. So once you've harvested your fresh plant material, you may decide that you don't want to use it fresh and you want to preserve it in some way. And we'll talk later in the class about using solvents or menstruum such as alcohol, oil, um, to preserve plant material, but a classic way to preserve plant material is simply to dry it. So I'm gonna speak a little bit to the drying conditions that you might want to get plant material that is vibrant, still has all of its nice color, um, and looks something like this. Um, so you can see that the red closer blossoms are still nice and purple, and there's still some green in there. Um, these rose petals, and the way that you tell if it's dry is it has this very sort of like crinkly, crunchy sound when you squeeze it. Um, and you want to sort of find the thickest stem on the plant that you're drying and if, make sure that it has that nice snap and then you know that the plant is fully dry and ready to bag up. Um, it's also very easy to tell if you've bagged your plant material too soon um, because you'll start to get um, little droplets or almost fog on the inside of the bag and that's a sign that you need to dry the plants a little bit longer. You want to make sure that you're drying things in the dark. So your drying conditions should be warm, um, 80 degrees, sort of 80 to 100 degrees. Um, you want fairly low moisture, um, and darkness is what preserves the color. So these are some bachelor button flowers that are fully dried and ready to be put into teas. Um, and if you don't have access to a space with those conditions in your home, um, another great strategy is to um, put your fresh plant material into a paper bag. Once the plant, fresh plant material is in there, you kind of loosely roll up the paper bag and then put it in your car. Um, the paper bag will provide the darkness and the car in the sunlight in the spring and summer months will provide enough heat and dryness to dry your plant material within just a few days. common ways to both preserve and extract the chemistry of plants is in what's called an alcohol infusion or an alcohol extraction or a tincture. Um, and you can make a fresh tincture from any plant material in the summer. Um, the main things that you want to pay attention to in making an alcohol extract is in order for it to be shelf stable and bacteriostatic, it needs to have a final alcohol percentage of 35% or higher. Um, and most of the alcohol that you buy, you know, such as like vodka or rum, is already at 40%, so 80 proof is 40%. Um, so if you're adding fresh plant material that has water content, that doesn't give you much of a window. Um, so I often recommend if you're um, going to be making your own tinctures, um, trying to find an alcohol that's a little bit higher, something like a Bacardi 151 is at 75%. Um, and that just gives you a little bit more wiggle room for working with fresh plant. 
Um, if you only have 40% alcohol, then I do recommend partially drying or even drying the plant before making medicine, but you lose some of the potency and the vitality when you dry it, so that's an important consideration. Um, I recommend for folks starting out making tinctures to use what's called the Simpler's Method, which is simpler, but there actually was a man named Simpler who put his name on this method. Um, so the simpler's method is to collect plant material, um, chop it up as finely as possible because you want to increase the surface area of the plant and the bioavailability of the constituents um, exposed to the alcohol in the solvent. Um, put that in a glass jar because you don't want to use something like plastic that um, might also be leaching into the alcohol. You don't want to make a plastic extract for medicine. And then cover the plant material with about a quarter inch of, of liquid space over the top. Um, let that sit. You can shake it occasionally to help extract with a little bit of kinetic energy. Um, usually four to six weeks is the period of time that you let it um, sit to extract. Um, and then you strain that um, 